for its practical convenience, value, features, power delivery, and efficiency, the U7 from Vitalin has received the second best first impressions I've given to any e-bike. But how well has this bike held up in the long run? Over the past 4 months and 300 miles, I've been testing it under rough riding conditions that the bike was clearly not designed for, just to see if there's any new critical failures. Link in the description for my first impressions video about this bike if you'd like more details about it. The bike has a lot of good things going for it, especially at this price point, and it had one major flop, which we'll discuss in a moment. For this, my final review of the bike, I'll mostly just be discussing how well it's held up, and any of the key features which have dramatically affected the bike, in a positive or negative way. In my experience, the U7 is a strong contender to the Engine Pro from Ingwe, which up until this point is still my number one pick for a value e-bike. It's a pretty close competition though, because the U7 does have some features about it which are stronger than the Engine Pro, and we'll discuss in a moment. For now, I would like to get the major negative out of the way about this bike and why it really got knocked into second place. As far as I can tell from every photo on their website and the description, they're still using the same suspension seat post on the U7 that I had major issues with in my first few weeks of riding this bike. The particular seat post they're using out of the box is a bit of a confusing choice when I consider that the build quality of the rest of the bike is pretty darn good. I'm more than willing to call companies out when they use cheap components on their bikes, but because this was the only major issue I had out of the box, and it's a relatively cheap upgrade, it wasn't enough to knock the rest of the bike down on the list. So I hopped on Amazon and upgraded it with a Zoom suspension seat post. I've had good luck with Zoom products in the past, they're pretty cheap, but the quality's decent, and it's proven to be the same on this bike. The only loss and convenience I get with this upgrade is that it doesn't have a flip-up seat, so removing the battery requires removing the seat post. Which is pretty quick and easy, so I don't care. The only other minor complaint I've had about the U7 is actually not isolated to the U7. It's an issue you might run into on any bikes with folding mechanisms, like the folding stem and the folding frame. This issue isn't really something that affects the integrity of a bike with folding mechanisms, but it can be kind of annoying. After a couple of weeks of riding the bike, especially in dusty environments, I notice you form little creak sounds every time you sit on the bike and adjust your position. Uh, from what I can only assume is minor movements in the folding mechanisms. Luckily, this is an easy issue to fix on pretty much any bike with a folding mechanism. You just sprinkle some graphite powder on any of the contact points and the creaking noise goes away almost instantly. And graphite is literally something you can just rub on with a pencil if you don't want to go out and buy the powder. Most of my long-term viewers know I don't go out of my way to abuse the bikes. That just happens naturally under my riding conditions. But that's pretty much it. Those are the only two issues I've had with the bike. Now we'll go ahead and discuss some areas about this bike for its value price that shine over my first place winner, and maybe other options that you're comparing it to. Not to refeed you a bunch of information we've already discussed in our first impressions video, any of the features I'll be discussing from this point on are simply my experience with them and how they affect the quality of the bike after having used them for some time. At the time of recording, the U7 comes in at $1,150 with the coupon code on their website. This is an identical price tag to our first place winner, the Engine Pro, and both bikes include a 16 amp hour battery with their base models. But this is where the U7 shines over our first place winner. 
The U7 has opted for Samsung cells in their battery packs, which are of higher quality, provide a longer life with more charge cycles, and offer better amperage. The higher quality cells have also given me a better peace of mind when it comes to safety. Not only have I gotten better acceleration and range numbers out of the U7's battery pack, but there's another option which the Engine Pro cannot offer due to space limitations in the frame. The U7 can upgrade to a 20 amp hour battery pack for only $100 more. That's a lot of extra range for 100 bucks, so it's kind of a no-brainer. A brake system that's been popping up on more and more e-bikes, and I've been enjoying it ever since, is the Dyslin brake system. My best assumption is this brake system was originally designed for budget mopeds, but tends to work out really well on e-bikes. As comparing it to something like the budget Shimano hydraulic brakes you see on other e-bikes, it provides better stopping power, more tactile feedback in the brake levers, easier adjustments of the brake levers, and the brake pads last longer because they simply have more meat on them. To be blunt, even though it's probably a budget brake system for a moped, it's the best one I've tested on any bicycle. And they use the thick 180mm rotors, which have some benefits as well. They're less likely to be bent during shipping, to be bent if you kick them or you wreck the bike, or simply to warp under heavy use because of the added meat. As a matter of fact, if I can find these sold separately, I'm gonna start using them on my two-stroke gas bikes, because they certainly look up to the task. In my first impressions under just normal use going to work for a week, I noted that this bike tend to be more efficient than others I've tested. And that's proven true, as my range test on this bike with the 16 amp hour battery has given me some rather impressive numbers. As you know, numbers are going to vary from rider to rider in different situations. For me personally, I'm about 200 pounds and I ride in a mostly flat environment. When I'm traveling to work, which is what I've been using this bike for the most, I'll generally carry about 20 to 30 pounds of cargo. Full throttle operation of the U7 from a charge battery until it stops running was 21 and a half miles. That is really good for a 16 amp hour battery. With the cruise control held at 20 miles an hour, this gave me 32 miles. Those tests were done with specific reasons being to drain the battery and see how far it would go. Under my real world riding conditions, going back and forth to work for two weeks without charging the battery, I got over 50 miles and it still had power left. This was at 16 miles an hour, pedaling with the motor. I imagine the 20 amp hour battery would give an extra 4 to 10 miles to each one of those numbers, respectively. The advertisement on their website shows between 40 and 55 miles. As expected, they're going to use the higher number with pedal assist, but at least they didn't inflate the numbers. I do realize a step through bike is not everyone's cup of tea, and in my riding conditions it's probably not the best option for long term use, but I have come to appreciate the step through option. Being able to easily stand up when you come to a stop, just step through the frame of the bike, doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you're doing it a lot every day, it makes a difference. Especially if you're going to put a big basket on the rear rack, trying to swing your leg over a basket's kind of annoying, so that's nice. When it comes to convenience, ease of use, and a few other dynamics we'll discuss here in a moment, the 20 inch diameter fat tire bikes have really grown on me as a sweet spot. Their smaller footprint makes them easier to store, easier to maneuver around obstacles, easier to get on and off the bike, all around just more convenient in any situation. Plus you still get the fat tires with lower PSI for that cushy ride feel. The lower center of gravity also aids in stability, especially under sketchy conditions. Plus, with smaller diameter tires, you're offered more torque from the motor for better hill climbing capabilities, and the brake system doesn't have to work as hard to stop you quickly. It's just all around better in pretty much any situation I ride the bike. And the icing on the cake for a bike like the U7 is most 20 inch diameter fat tire bikes these days are using alloy wheel sets. These aren't cheap ones that feel sketchy under my riding conditions, they actually feel solid and I can trust them. There's no spokes to adjust or brake, and every single one I've seen so far is using sealed bearings which is a major relief for long term maintenance. Another small convenience included with the U7 is the front rack, which for the most part in my first First impressions was just a side note, until I actually started putting my backpack on it. And with my panniers and backpack, I never have to carry anything on my person, and it just makes the ride so much more comfortable. 
Another point of interest I noted in my first impressions video about this bike was its unexpectedly high amount of torque. The power delivery on this system is, is really nice, especially for its size and price. And trusting the true rating of a motor on a commercial e-bike these days is kind of a crapshoot as I've had some which have seen vastly underpowered, others which seem spot on, and a few handful such as the U7 which seem like they've underrated their motor, because this certainly feels like more than a 750 watt motor. My top rated bike in this category, the Engine Pro, certainly was not lacking in power and I enjoyed the motor on that bike, but the U7 tops it. This simply has more acceleration. It's still governed at a top speed of 28 miles an hour, but if you can find a way to unlock it, it feels like it has plenty more to give. It gets you to that top speed faster than the Engine Pro. My dusty riding conditions can play hell on front suspensions, especially for cheap forks, and although the U7 does not appear to use high quality forks, at the very least, the seals on these have done their job well. They're not gritty and have stayed smooth throughout their entire travel. I had pointed out in my first impressions that this bike's simplistic step-through design, fat tires, good acceleration, and top speed might cause some riders to get carried away and get hurt. That still might be the case, but I can say at the very least, under my rough road riding conditions, the frame is held up flawlessly. All the welds look good, no new noises or weird dynamics coming from the bike. I do trust it, although I still wouldn't push it. To sum up my official review of the U7 from Vitalin, this is a solid choice in my opinion if you're willing to overlook the really poor quality seat post that comes with the bike. It's an upgrade I can justify because everything else on it is really nice. It has all the features I asked for, especially for a budget e-bike, really good power, nice range, and the integrity of the bike is held up well. If you're in the market for a step through e-bike, this is certainly one you should consider when comparing your options. So I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. And until next time, ride safe.